Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. Now, in the dead of night, on Valentine's Day, the airport tower at the Bandar Naik International Airport receives a message from two military aircraft requesting clearance to land. Whom could they be? Is it a Santa Claus for Valentine's Day kind of a situation? Was it an emergency? Was someone in trouble? Even though it looks like the new Mission Impossible movie's opening plot, the reality seems even more sinister. Now, on the 14th of February 2023, two Boeing C-17 Globemasters, which are heavy-duty military aircraft designed to carry military personnel, equipment, and even bombs, landed at the Bandar Naik International Airport. At that time, we were still determining why these crafts were in Sri Lanka and their purpose. On board, over 20 member delegation from the United States of America. Well, there was no prior announcement of such a visit to Sri Lanka by such a delegation. In fact, the whole visit was tight-lipped as ever. Such a hush-hush affair. Obviously, this piques the curiosity of many around the country. The social media was read in a red with it. Are they here to finalize the deal with, uh, to establish a U.S. military base in Sri Lanka? Is the U.S. preparing for a possible showdown with China? Or are they here to take over Trincomalee Harbour? Unfortunately, there wasn't much information on this visit. Now, to understand the possible motives of the visit, we have to see who came on board those flights. According to a media release, after all of them left, issued by the Ministry of Defense, said that it was, in fact, U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense, Jedediah Royal. The rest of the media release is a typical government release with no other detail, but some PR activity to say that all is well. Now, who is Jedediah Royal? What's his track record? Perhaps if we look into what he has been up to, it might give us a better understanding of why they are here. Now, his recent activity has been tightening relations against China over the Chinese spy balloon shot over the United States. Joining me now is uh, Danny Dutanamasam from the Data Board to give us an idea as to who Jedediah Royal might be and what exactly his intentions are in Sri Lanka. Then it's good to see you. Now, what have you learned? I know you've been looking into what he has been doing thus far and where he has been uh, doing all these kinds of things. What exactly did you learn? Yes, Mahesh, now I think it's, as you mentioned, it's a bit important to look back because his most recent appointment that you were talking about, the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for the Indo-Pacific area, security affairs for that specific region, was quite recent. Now that is not what happened, what he was doing or what he was part of before. He was part of the NATO before, and even before that, he was part of overseeing the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Now. We, in, in that capacity where he was, was he was the former deputy director of the Defense Security Corporation Agency, which is primarily what works with the people on the ground, as in when the United States has to go into Afghanistan, this is the organization that looks into training the Afghan yeah. civilians and to look into how they can have a partnership. What they call on their website is security cooperation. Now, a lot of interesting things there. We see that he not only uh, overlooked the withdrawal from Afghanistan, but also he was the one in charge of when the United States, when Ukraine, uh, when the Ukraine, Russia, uh, with, with the Ukraine-Russia intervention began. So we see that he has a lot of experience in these kind of conflict regions and a lot of import, like we can join a lot of dots, Mahesh, you would see. Exactly. And as you mentioned, we'll just have a look about what he says about China. Uh, Senator, um, we're continuing to make assessments on uh, the Chinese intent for this specific operation. Um, and we'll have further to share in the classified setting along the specific intent. Um, I think it would be uh, false to try to characterize this operation as purely a mistake. Um, my understanding, sir, is that the, uh, uh, this is consistent with a broader set of actions China's undertaking to uh, intrude uh, our, our sovereign territory and those of our allies and partners. Mahesh, what we saw there was the exact uh, the, the hearing at the Senate subcommittee about the Chinese spy balloon that has been filling the airways in the United States. We are quite clear about what its intentions are when it comes to China. Indeed, uh, Danidu, a um, lot of things he has been doing thus far is with regard to the whole uh, uh, military side of things for uh, America, for United States of America. Once again, what you said was absolutely right. We have to connect the dots because nobody is giving us the information. We spoke to the Ministry of Defense. They said apparently they are going to give us some kind of a statement. They gave us some kind of a statement which had no nothing in it. We ju it just had the names who, uh, as to who came. And then we had, uh, um, you know, we spoke to the, the, I think the airport, right? You spoke to the uh, airport exactly. officials trying to figure out who is here. 
nothing, nothing is there. That is the time at the data board as always. Thank you very much. Now, these overnight mystery uh, visits by the US is never with good intentions. They are fighting hard for their country while clowns of our own are shaving their behind in order to offer it at the altar for the United States to use it according to their whims. Now, many influential defense analysts worldwide are sounding drums of war, not for Ukraine, but for a possible showdown between China and the United States. We're yet to uh, find out how it will happen, but looking at visits such as this is very evident, even to a second grader, that the United States is taking names of their friends. So, can we milk the rest of this scenario? Well, if we are intelligent enough, we should think in terms of Sri Lanka rather than be a slave once again. For a moment, think if this was a Chinese aircraft that came in the dead of night and went away secretly. I mean the Colombo. Empty-minded liberals and their Twitter rants would blow a fuse. So hard that even Elon Musk would say, calm down, bro. Uh, joining me now is former Human Rights Commissioner Dr. Pratibha Mahana Mehva. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for your t time. Now, apparently, we heard that two military flights uh, had come to Sri Lanka carrying the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense for a defense-related visit. We are not yet. Uh, we haven't been notified as to the exact details of the meeting with the officials here. Now, Doctor. Do you think there is a strategic move by the USA to infiltrate uh, the internal affairs of Sri Lanka or perhaps even go further to see whether they can put up a military base here in this country? Mahesh, the whole story is one page of a whole book. Now, when you see USA, they were really supporting to wipe out terrorism in Sri Lanka. I can remember the last stages of the war, there were six to seven ships which were heading for Sri Lanka with arm loaded up ammunition, guns and other things. So before arriving there to Sri Lanka, what USA and the other countries supported Sri Lanka to actually not to enter these ships and most of the ships, uh, uh, information was given to Navy, Air Force and they did the uh, best. And thereafter, we have seen one Chinese uh, submarine came to Sri Lanka, Mahesh. At that time also, India really got upset and India asked from Sri Lanka, what is the reason that the Sri Lanka former president said for fuel purposes? I don't know whether they believed or not. So likewise, this Asia, one of the best center geopolitics is uh, Sri Lanka. And also we have seen Manila in uh, Philippines, they have an Air Force base. But Sri Lanka, Katuna, Aika, near the airport, one of the country having the Air Force base and many countries near a civilian airport, very less, uh, you know, uh, air bases are there. So uh, high top security visitors Sri Lanka, maybe they are really concerned about the, you know, latest Taliban uh, and then other fundamentalist uh, terrorist Muslim organizations are there, how they are operating. And uh, specifically the tension between India, China, Sri Lanka. So they may be thinking in future what type of uh, proposals must be best for security. And we cannot forget the MCC is still there, MCC Sri Lanka didn't sign. So maybe for country security as well as uh, region security, uh, maybe all these things are coming up. For the air base, I don't think uh, immediately they cannot set up because the country's security is there with the parliament of Sri Lanka. So people's sovereignty is there, they must decide what. But many countries, you know, how the Iraq uh, war was started with uh, Bahrain. So they set up the base there. So likewise, USA have their strategies. So we have to clearly see what are the new trends coming up. Absolutely. Uh, doctor, how well, uh, how will the current tension between uh, the US and uh, China affect Sri Lanka? Oh, that's a very good question, Mahesh. Look, now the biggest problem in Sri Lanka, rather than geopolitics, geoeconomics. Geoeconomics, Sri Lanka facing a huge financial crisis. So to set up that, that's why we are uh, asking the support from IMF. IMF ready to give the strategic plan, whatever had done is going to pass. Now the biggest issue 
even india ready to reconstruct of the debt for a long time period but china only giving uh, two years so china is not accepting for a longer period of reconstruction of these debts and loans and they are only two years but im is not satisfied now there is a big problem so what usa must support us so usa actually financially all these loans and debts given by most of the time uh, uh china and india so if usa can support us for some investment and introducing uh, uh, sri lanka to new friends and we can get it but there's a tension going on so always even i have seen in human rights council even the resolution not against uh, 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 country so china take one side usa ta one side this is the world politics playing a game so therefore uh, most of time india go with uh, usa base and china already looking in a different development but most of the chinese investments are there in the southern harbor and port city so we can't forget them but sometimes the usa some type of information and some type of comments hurt china so that's why china also coming up uh, not to mix up this we will do the best for sri lanka so there is a cold war every time in china uh, china and usa but many uh, usa investment uh, all these are china you you go to usa and any <laughs> any state you want to buy something made in china so therefore they also have some plans for most of the loans that you get by china to usa usa investments are there without china they can't run and even see any uh, usa uh, state there is a chinese market chinese dragon shop china <laughs> every they have not only usa many kind they have right so what i want to see sri lanka can negotiate well with usa and china and take these two things into one day one round table and start discussion rather than giving adverse comment to sri lanka both countries love sri lanka both countries want to help sri lanka to develop many things usa from human rights and china also supporting for a long standing friend in the unhcrc Indeed, uh, uh, understanding, uh, doctor. Since I have you here, uh, we all know that the UNHRC session is coming. Do you think uh, there is a collective effort by the West to push Sri Lanka to an anti-China position? Uh, Mahesh, uh, this is not on uh, this year. I have seen from 2014 onwards. Most of the time, a proposal or a resolution backed by uh, USA, they take with the Western support. But most of the time. china russia vietnam cuba they coming on one side this is world policy once again i am telling this so when we stay one stand of human rights for a country and uh, the other side communist bloc and also sri lanka was supported by don't forget arabic uh, country most of the arabic countries supported us now what we have to do to win the west we must have a proper reconciliation plan we we had llrc like that so always west asking we have passed resolution for the last one year what you have done so for that sri lanka parliament having a, a great duty to do it it is in the constitution so what is our national action plan for human rights at least our minister of foreign affairs he has to he must visit in march early march and say this time so 51 uh, that they have passed a resolution and the resolution is dragging for a long time they are asking a hybrid uh, you know be a hybrid uh, court and we have seen in canada uh, one part in, uh, without any investigation they have that so certain uh, uh, diaspora you know efforts they supported with the canada government and sri lanka then genocide so sri lanka has to win now today you must have a reconciliation plan or a truth and reconciliation commission i urge the government to appoint and also a very recently a report was handed by the for a, a, a sitting supreme court honorable judge to last president appointed a commission and to see how we are going to develop this so take into consideration all i have seen now reconciliation language culture is really coming up in uh, northern province so we must work hand to hand and we must win the ltt diaspora groups also this time otherwise the resolution track one risk is there if we go to the security council one day we are facing a big issue Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much. That was the former Human Rights Commissioner, Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva. Let's take a short commercial break. Soon after, I will speak with Dr. Rebecca Ray from the University of Boston about Sri Lanka's current economic crisis. This is this is the state of the nation. Back in a moment.